Hi kids, welcome back to Bible Basics Craft. Today, we're going to do a craft that deals with prayer, because this week's lesson was about a prayer that Hannah said. And there are different physical tools that you can actually use to help you pray. The Catholic people, people in the Catholic faith, often will use rosary beads, a set of beads in a circle that they can work their fingers through to help them focus and pray. Some people carry a prayer stone with them, and whenever they feel that prayer stone in their pocket, it reminds them to pray. It helps them focus. What we're going to do this week is a labyrinth. No, not like the big labyrinth outside of the church that you walk and calm yourself down and reflect as you're walking. We're going to make a finger labyrinth that you can actually place in front of you and focus on like this. And you can put your finger in it and let it curl around into the circle as you focus and pray. It helps you be peaceful, helps you give, you give you something to focus on. So I hope you enjoy this craft. Let's get started. In the first chapter of the first book of Samuel, we read about Hannah's prayer at the tabernacle. Verses 12 through 14 say, As she kept on praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. We're going to look a little more closely here at two of the phrases that were in that reading. Praying before the Lord and Hannah was praying in her heart. This phrase, praying before the Lord, is very different than praying to the Lord. Praying to indicates a direction. God is above and distant. Praying before indicates intimacy and unity. Praying to indicates separateness. Now this phrase, praying in her heart, this is referring to a person praying in a manner of total absorption into God's presence. It is worship of spirit to spirit. Hannah was utterly oblivious to what was going on around her or that Eli was looking on suspiciously and critically. In the 17th and 18th verses, we read, Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. Notice in verse 18 that the act of pouring out herself to the Lord in complete honesty brought peace and comfort to her. It's not that she became certain that now she would have a baby. It's that the closeness with God, done in a humble and sincere manner, gave her that Peace that passes understanding. All right, so let's see what's in our bag today. 
All right. Oh, clay, a marble. This looks like a tube of paint, a paper plate, and a little piece of wax paper. All right, we can make something with this. Let's get started. All right, I'm gonna open my bag of clay. And I read a trick about working with air dry modeling clay. It says if you put some lotion or cream on your hands first, it will keep the clay from sticking. Now, when I made this, I had clay stuck all over my hands. So this is gonna be my experiment to see if this hand cream actually helps. So I'm gonna squeeze a little bit on my hands rub it in and you'll get to see as i will whether this works or not okay now i have greasy slippery hands i'm going to take my clay out i've got it wrapped up with some water and a paper towel around it so prepare to get messy ah and it's a big rectangular block and i just tuck that away now, this is the hard part. You have got to soften this clay by working with it and squeezing it and moving it around and getting the warmth of your hand to soften this clay. It's kind of cool, but you have to be patient and just keep working with it until it's soft and you're able to make a nice, smooth ball with it. So check back with me in a minute and we'll see if it's ready to go. Okay guys, I'm about ready to say that putting lotion on my hands beforehand probably didn't help one bit. So scratch that idea. You may just wanna wet your hands every now and then as you're making your nice soft ball. And once you get a ball shape, ugh, we're gonna start, find a good work surface. This will come up with some water and paper towels. I did it on my kitchen counter. Right now you can see I have a piece of glass that I'm working on. So I can press this down and I'm just gonna to try to make a circle. If you're feeling really ambitious, you might make a heart shape or something similar than that. But we are gonna be putting our trail into this clay so don't make anything too complicated because this is going to be a nice big fat trail for our fingers to go through so right now i'm just pressing and trying to make a circular shape We're trying to level it out so work with your clay and see if you can get a nice kind of circle that you're ready to build your maze into Check back with me in a minute. All right. Your idea is to just sort of make it nice and level across the top, although that's gonna change in a minute. And to give you an idea of how thick this is, we'll look at how big it is. So it's smaller than the paper plate you have. So it's about, looks like about three eighths of an inch thick or a quarter inch thick. Now, you have in your uh, bag a little marble and we're going to use the marble to help us make the trail it's nice and smooth I should put lotion on the marble I'm going to start in the center and press down into the clay and then just sort of roll and push it around and make a serpentine sort of shape that just keeps growing and growing and growing. And it may be a little bit messy, but the nice thing with clay is that if you make a mistake, just patch it and go back again. So check with me in a second, and hopefully I'll have a little labyrinth. All right, kids, so this clay will dry in the air, you don't have to bake it or anything, it will dry fairly quickly. In fact, I'm already starting to see little areas where it's drying out. 
So I'm using my finger now, and you might want to even wet your finger a little bit to kind of go back in, make sure that your finger can go through these little paths. And I'm kind of smoothing it out a little bit. Just having a real good messy time here. And I actually had to add a little bit of clay to this wall because I sort of ran out over the edge there. But that is one of the nice things about clay. You can just build and squish. And I pulled off a little bit from over here and added it over here. So once your marble gets covered with clay, just pull it off to the side and clean it off. And now I think this is looking fairly good. And now I'm gonna show you You'll need to leave this about 24 hours. You'll notice that it will get lighter in the areas where it's drying. Here's a dry one. You can see it's a good bit lighter than our wet one. So once it's all dried out, that's when you can put the glaze on. All right, check back in a second. So guys, I was getting ready to transfer my labyrinth over onto this paper plate. And at that point, I remembered why I included a piece of wax paper in your bag, your craft bag. That is because we probably should have started this project out by putting that ball of clay on the wax paper. But Miss Lee forgot. And let me show you the consequence of forgetting to put it on the wax paper, your labyrinth will stick to whatever surface you have it on. So just a good reminder that you might, and I'll put a reminder in the movie here, the video, but this is what happens when you don't put it on wax paper. Hopefully though, you can kind of reshape it and then allow it to dry on this paper plate. Okay, check back in a second. Now, once your labyrinth is dry, we're going to, and make sure you don't see any dark areas because we're gonna be putting our glaze on. Your glaze is in this little tube. I've sealed it up with masking tape. Hopefully it has made it to you and not dried out or spilled. So think what I'm gonna suggest is just go on and squeeze it right into your labyrinth, kind of work your way around. There's no really any reason to, yeah, I think that's gonna be plenty of glaze for you. And it just looks like white glue. Take your paintbrush that you've gotten from a previous class and just start making sure that everything has some glaze on it, even the outside edges. The glaze is gonna act to smooth this out and it's gonna add a beautiful dimensional color to your holy object that you'll be using to help you pray. So. I'm gonna spread this around, make sure everything is covered. And then once it's dry, I think you'll be very pleased to pull this out whenever you're feeling the need to talk with God or just to open yourself up to hear God's message to you. Guys, thank you for joining us on this craft. I hope it's been fun. I'm gonna get rid of some of that. And I hope you've enjoyed learning about Hannah. And we will see you next week. Here's how the labyrinth looked once it was covered with the glaze and I had removed a lot of that excess glazing. And this glaze will dry fairly quickly so you'll be able to use it. Here I'm going to offer you a suggestion on how you might use your labyrinth. So friends, I was going to show you a good way you can utilize 
a prayer labyrinth like the one we're making in the craft this week. Set aside some time and some space that you can focus on trying to communicate with God. I'll go on and warn you, sometimes you're going to be more successful than other times. Sometimes it's going to feel really good. Other times you're going to feel like, oh, why did I do that? But the important thing is that you set aside some time to do this. The prayer labyrinth will be able to help you focus. So I've lit a candle here. It's quiet. I'm seated on the floor. And now I'm just going to concentrate on breathing in and out. I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer as I meander my finger around the spiral of the labyrinth back and forth. You might find there's a word that you just want to repeat over and over. The important thing is, as your mind wanders, try to bring it back and concentrate on God. You might want to focus one prayer session on thankfulness. You could focus one prayer session on thinking of other people. You might focus one prayer session on just focusing on things that are worrying you that you want to share with God. But the labyrinth can serve as a tool to help pull your focus back to what you need to be doing if you want to establish that connection with God. So, let me begin my prayer. Our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 